So you want to move to Charlottesville? There is so much more that I want to share with you. And make sure you know, strange facts add an extra layer of fun to any move, right? Isn't that pretty? The rich history and the beauty of Charlottesville area. But you know what? I want you to know the tea on Charlottesville. I want you to know what nobody else will tell you and what you need to be prepared for with living here. So come on, let's go for a ride and check out Charlottesville in the springtime. Number one, Charlottesville is a college town. I know you know that, but I want you to understand that it is often named as one of the most beautiful college towns there is. So I am down here on the grounds because UVA does not have a campus. They have grounds. So you know how most college campuses you think, well, they're all very intermingled, intermeshed and things like that. So not really UVA. And that's one, one thing that never occurred to me because I've always been involved and down here and around here. My father was a professor here. But one of my co-workers said, who that came from, who has lived in other very large college towns, said you just, you don't see the students. So unless you're attending a game or unless you're coming down to show, you know, friends or family, the campus, or unless you're doing something like that, you don't really, run into the students. You don't really mingle with the students. It, they're predominantly down and they live in this area. And most, actually, I don't think first or second years, but I definitely know first years are not allowed to have cars. So they live very close to campus and you just don't intermingle with them enough. Well, I wouldn't say intermingle enough. I would say you're not mixed and mingled together. Not here, not really. You'll find some, but most interactions will be limited to or with students. Again, when you're attending games, when you're actually down here on the campus. And as a reminder, this is one of two UNESCO heritage sites that we are so fortunate to have in our backyard of Charlottesville. Stone Chapel, it's right over there. So yes, ranked often as a top college town, but you're probably not gonna be interacting a lot with the students. You do not wanna miss what I am dishing tea on. Seriously, you do not wanna miss what is coming up and that I'm going to share. This is another reason why you need to give me a call because don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and end up miserable. You need to text me, call me, email me. I swear to you, I will respond. I'm not going to bite and I'm not AI. I know it sounds funny, but it truly, I, this is what I do. I have grown up here and these are things that I live with day in and day out. My family lives with day in and day out. And these are things that you're not going to find in your little welcome to Charlottesville Chamber of Commerce brochure or from somebody who's doing videos that like the 24 hours in Charlottesville or somebody who's coming over here from, from say Harrisonburg or Lexington or something like that. Two different areas. I've grown up here and that is why I love doing this for you. Charlottesville and the surrounding area have an amazing reputation for fabulous vino. Thomas Jefferson and his ability and thirst for knowledge and growing things figured out that our Blue Ridge Mountains were a perfect growing scenario for the grapes and it has been off and running since he brought back vines from France. It's so good that in 2023, wine enthusiasts named Charlottesville and the Monticello American Venticulture Area, the AVA, the wine region of the year. That's huge. It recognizes over 40 wineries in 
and around our area. Mind blown. Next time you're at your favorite wine store, you should really check out. Go into the Virginia section, look for some of our larger ones. There's everything from King Family, Trump Winery. We have, um, let's see some of our other ones. King Family, I said, Blenheim, which is Dave Matthews. Number three on the list of the, the tea that you need to know before you move here. And this is one that uh, so many people just do not mention. And it affects everybody, everybody. Whether you are two-legged or four-legged, I swear to you, this time of year, and this is pollen season. Now, I'm not talking about a little tree pollen or a little grass pollen. No, really, really. If you have allergies, be prepared. Uh, for example, I when I fill up my little pillbox, my weekly pillbox, every night I just put a Claritin in my little pillbox. And normally it's for nine months out of the year. Just put it in there. If you don't have allergies when you move here, be prepared. You probably will once you get here. What does that mean for living here? Well, during this time of the year, all your windows are up. Whether it's in the car, whether it's at home, no windows down. And I am one that, especially during this time of year, I love to sleep with my windows open so it dips down into the 40s in, in the bedroom. But no, pollen season, you cannot do it. So all the windows are up. Washing your car, fabulous. It'll be yellow by morning. I swear to you, it'll be yellow overnight or within a couple of hours. Now, today I've been out driving you around so, uh, and it rained all night long really hard. So my car is not too bad, but I'm going to show you. I'm definitely going to, because once I get home, I actually park under a tree. The worst culprits, if you're wondering, are going to be trees, grasses, ragweed, all of those. is so bad that my National Weather app actually during this time of the year gives a pollen forecast so people can be prepared. Today it's very very windy so I'm sure the pollen count is very much up especially since it rained last night. Everything today when the, with the sun coming out has opened up and all the pollen is coming out. The pollen pods will drop, they will clog your gutters, they will ball up and clog and create almost like tumbleweeds we get that in front of our house from our pin oaks, from the uh, little seed pod, weed pods, pollen pods. Pollen. It's real. Don't play around with it. Now you know. Okay, so this is starting of the pollen season. It rained all day yesterday. And you can see this is just from overnight. And this is actually just the beginning. Just pollen season is is pretty intense. See the pollen. Number four. Yes, we do have hollers. I'm gonna put up my window. And I'm not saying hollows, like the ho hollowed halls of Monticello, or I'm saying hollers. So a holler is can mean a small valley between mountains or a remote area. Usually it's a narrow valley that you're driving up uh, with a single lane road. And sometimes they'll, and this is true because I've shown houses that have been up hollers and sometimes they will be broken up or have water uh, streaming down through the, the drive, the holler. Here's what I'm going to tell you about it. If you don't know where you're going and you hear banjos, turn around, just turn around err on the side of safety. I've gone some places where I swear to you, I have even had the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Now there are hollers throughout and some are getting more developed uh, just because of the natural scheme of things. Things get developed. I know there's a vineyard that is up a holler and then one of the, there's a, a house that was for sale and I swear to you the address was Hoopin Holler Lane. Hoopin Holler Lane. So they are true. 
and I don't know what else to tell you about it. But I want you to stick with me. You, There's another one that I am just dying to share. Again, this is why you need to reach out to me, because all this running around in my brain, I want to share it all with you. So reach out to me, and let's see how I can give you additional information. So stick around. You will not believe what I'm going to tell you next. I just am loving hopscotching around and showing you how beautiful it is in the spring around here. So next up on our list, well, I want to tell you, while we're talking about haulers or we talked about haulers, I want you to be in the know, for real. So the next thing on my list to remind you about, moonshine. Moonshine is still very much of the culture here. If you know people, it can be found. And now you can go to the ABC store and find some very shushy, bougie moonshine, but it's not the real stuff. This is stuff that is made up in the hills, probably by somebody who was taught by his grandpappy or by his and pappy's pappy whatever it is but it's real and you do have to be careful with it here's a prime example i went to i attended a lovely chamber of commerce event oh and this has been years ago years ago five six years ago well the person who was hosting who owned the establishment that was hosting and it was like a summer party you know just get together kind of thing there's about half a dozen of us standing around talking he was like oh i just got a new batch of shine let me go grab it and all of us were just sort of standing there going i know that's not what he said sure enough he comes down he's carrying two mason jars two large mason jars he had a bunch of small little glasses and he poured us all he goes okay here's the first one this is peach moonshine and all of us did drink it i will say i'm pretty sure my toes curled but it was good it was very very good obviously not sanctioned but it was good and then he a little while later he was getting ready to pour the blueberry so i had the peach but he was getting ready to pour the blueberry and i uh excused myself so can you just find it are you gonna find somebody standing on the corner going moonshine for sale no 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 but if you know people yes it is still very much a thing i mean with this many wineries and breweries and distilleries around here that are legal you're still gonna find custom homemade shine but do you remember that also that stuff can kill you you want to be very very cautious it is not something that you just drink easily Woo! wind's picking up a little bit so I've ducked off the trail that I'm walking on because I want to tell you one that just cracks me up. And it's one that you really need to know about. Number six on the T that you need to know before living in Charlottesville. You're not going to believe this one. Naked hiking day. I swear, scout honor, there is such a thing. Not made up. It is real. It is honored pretty much all over the south on different trails and paths for us on the appalachian trail is where you can and will find people enjoying and unofficially celebrating remember this is unofficial because you can't promote something like that it is always held on the summer solstice so june 21st and for here, around this area, it's going to be on the Appalachian Trail. Unofficially celebrated on trails and footpaths across the southeast and including our Appalachian Trail. Through hikers, bear it all to the chagrin of clothed hikers whose idea of a scenic view doesn't include body hair. Most law enforcement officials with the Park Services and the U.S. Forestry Service prefer to, shall we say, look the other way. <laughs> but hey, no judgment. If you, if you want to celebrate the solstice that way, no problem. And you know what else? I'm going to give you some tips. If you want to join in, here's my suggestion, or here's actually the suggestion from an article I was I was reading about it. They suggested to wear sunscreen, hats, and shoes. Okay, and remember the flop factor. I'll leave that to your imagination, but they suggested using Vaseline or something so that the uh, flop factor doesn't ruin the rest of your week. I guess I don't know, but now you know another reason. At this time, I'll remind you, feel free to subscribe to my channel 
because I'm pretty sure you're not going to find that little ditty anywhere else. And I don't want you to miss the other stuff that I am more than willing to share. So, naked hiking day. So on an added note for the, or on an extra note for the naked hiking day, one of my colleagues was mentioning, yeah, she didn't know about it either until her and her three young sons and her husband were just taking in an afternoon hike because it's easy to do when you're living in Charlottesville. Came around a corner and hello, now you know. So I know it's gonna be hard to top the last one, but I want you to know one of the other secrets, because I don't know, you know, to me it's not a big deal, but not only do we just have the run of the mill brews and ciders and such, we're like ground zero for several national brands. Brands such as Star Hill Brewery, actually started right down here in downtown Charlottesville. Bold Rock Cider, that's a national brand, and I'll tell you how I know that. Devil's Backbone is another one. Those are all started here locally. And there's others, like for example, right now I'm at X Park and standing right outside of Three Notched Brewing Company. But yeah, lots and lots started here. And here's the story of how I didn't, I don't drink beer, okay? Sue me. I do enjoy a good True Divine cider. So here's how I found out. We have the bigger names that started here. My daughter went to school down in Charleston, South Carolina. We made several good friends down there. So every time we would go down, I would take the uh, flavor of the season from Bold Rock because they were limited edition. And, and I was like, oh, my friends will love these. And uh, both Anton and Julia liked ciders. So finally, after bring, we I bring them like a six pack every, I don't know, every six months or something when we were gonna be down there. So finally, Anton looks at me one time, he goes, you know we can get this here, right? And my whole my whole thing was, no, uh, this is from Charlottesville, Virginia. This is from frickin' Nelson. And he was very much so like, no, really, Pam, we, we can get this here. So the next time I went into like the, the, I think it was Walmart down in Folly Beach, and sure as shit, they had uh, Star Hill, they had Bold Rock, and they had Devil's Backbone. So there you go. We are the ground zero for several. So I thought this was a beautiful place to talk to y'all. Look how pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? This is one of the reasons I absolutely adore spring here in Charlottesville and in the surrounding area. Just down from the University of Virginia in one of the older sections of town, I still can see all the mountains in the distance. And I came upon this beautiful, we have the red bud, we have a bunch of flowers going on, and it was so gorgeous. Anyways, I'm here because I want to talk about the next one. And that is, we enjoy all four seasons. And I know I've said that before, but I'm really trying to get it across to you that each season has a distinct time. But unfortunately, sometimes we can have all four seasons in a 24 hour period. So a prime example, last week, it was in the upper 30s overnight. By the time lunch came around, we were actually uh, around the 50s and mid 50s. And by the time dinner got here at like five or six, we were pushing the high 70s. So again, can have all four seasons. We can have them all in one day. And especially at this time of the year, it is a hundred percent chance of pollen. And as I'm standing here and watching the wind blow, I'm actually watching pollen clouds go around. So four seasons, maybe all in one day, but look at how pretty this is. This is just gorgeous. It's That's our red bud. And those flowers are edible too. And then you just have so, all the other stuff going on too. So pretty. So number nine on our list of the tea that I want you to know. And see, this is why you want to be with me. Growing up here, I know the tea. 
Number nine on my list is going to be haunted landmarks and UFOs. Now, I'm not talking about battlefields, hospitals, old psych wards, and such around the area. I'm talking that Charlottesville is rumored to have several haunted landmarks, and one is directly behind me. And that is going to be University of Virginia Rotunda. And just the general history, it does not surprise me. Another one is actually rumored to be Mickey Tavern, which is rumored to be haunted by a young girl named Annabelle. Now, the interesting thing is, is we just went through, Mickey Tavern was about to be purchased by Monticello Foundation and it fell out at the last minute. I don't know why, but evidently all the hauntings have to do with the Rotunda and Mickey Tavern. But wait, there's more. There's also rumored to be a Pantops Mountain UFO incident. In 1967, two police officers reported seeing a UFO over Pantops Mountain. The incident gained national attention and it still remains a topic of interest among many US UFO enthusiasts. So there you go. So I'm going to leave this haunted site and head to our next adventure. Okay, final dishing of the tea. And so you're in the know about Charlottesville, Virginia. Have you ever heard of a little website, little app called Reddit? Have you ever heard of it? Well, guess what? It was actually created right here behind me. The concept from UVA students sitting at the Waffle House. If you go in, there's actually a plaque on, on one of the benches. Reddit was formed here by a couple UVA students. You can't make this shit up. Now you know. Well, there you go. I have filled you in with things that you probably would never know about. But again, this is what I do. And I've lived here and I, I want to share this knowledge. If there is anything that you have uh, any questions or if areas or whatever it is, drop a comment below. I would love to hear it. I do try to respond to every comment. Also, reach out to me, text me, call me, email. Let's connect and see if living in Charlottesville is the right thing for you. So right now, I'm going to pack up. I hope you've really enjoyed going around and about. So we, we took in the university, we took in downtown, we took in the trails, we've taken in a lot. And I want, it, want you to come along for all of it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you've enjoyed any of this today, would love your thumbs up because everybody's walking around me being like, who is she talking to? And I'm like, hello, all of my people are with me here. <laughs> so y'all have a good day and I'll talk to you next time.